Um, you often hear that the main problem with having a social society is that you would basically require people to give up certain freedoms. Um, it can be, I mean, there's been a range of specifics about what kind of freedoms you'd give up. Perhaps freedom to decide what you can purchase, freedom to maximise your skills within the workplace because you'd have to give up because everyone would get an equal wage or something so you wouldn't be compensated for your better skills and uh, I read this recent article sorry not recent, I recently read an article by a guy named J.A. Cohen who's dead now, I think he died in 2009 and he's quite, I quite like him um, even though he's kind of considered um, a heresy sort of Marxist, what they're called, analytical Marxist or something. But I mean, he's analytical Marxist kind of developed in the 1970s. Um, they're, I think they're also called rational choice Marxists sometimes. But um, they kind of moved away from traditional Marxism. Traditional. And uh, so like historical materialism as a standpoint of analysis. And they moved to looking using certain Marxian concepts like exploitation, alienation from an empirical analytical standpoint. And most famously emphasized by a guy named Eric Olin Wright, who tried to develop um, a new sort of stratification for class for the twentieth century, which involved like stratifying proletariats, managers, capitalists, professionals, degrees of exploitation, all that stuff, and quite quite good, um, quite in depth, but that's another video. Back to J.A. Cohen, um, he wrote, his famous book was In Defense of Karl Marx, I think, that's what it's called, and he later kind of reconsidered historical materialism and he began to chime in on debates about egalitarianism. Um, his last book was actually called Why Not Socialism? And it was kind of... Uh, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I guess you got to understand it within the debate. But I read an article by him recently, and... Uh, said that again. But... To this article that I read, um, it's called Proletarian on Freedom, and it deals with the idea that within a capitalist system, as workers, we are unfree in this way. He gives the thought experiment of, imagine we're all in a room, there's five, ten of us or something, um, and there's a guy who has decided he's going to lock us in there. <clears throat> he's left the jaw slightly open. But once one person goes through that door, there's some mechanism within the door that will make it shut and close forever. And the rest of us will be trapped inside. Now we're all in different standpoints in the room. So I guess we all have different chances of being the first to get to the door. You could also perhaps say, in light of recent egalitarian debates, that we all have different abilities. Naturally speaking, like I'm, you know, taller so I can run faster, um, while the guy next to me is really fat, so he, he won't stand a chance. But Cohen says that this idea is like, this Ford experiment is like capitalism. We're all, we're, we can earn, only so many people can be capitalists. We can't all be capitalists. Otherwise, capitalism will work. It needs labour to produce the commodities, extract the surplus, etc. So, while individually we're all free to run for that door, we all have the chance. There's nothing stopping us. Once one person goes through, no one else can go through. So, collectively, we're unfree. I really like that idea of individually we're unfree. Individually we're free, but collectively we're unfree.
I think it's a poor, Im, important point in the debate about freedom versus equality. Because the general, I mean, that's a debate that's been going on for centuries. And the general idea is that to have, you have to have one or the other. You can only have one or the other. You kind of have to give up one. And I think that's a very unique way of looking at what kind of freedoms we have within certain structures such as capitalism. Yeah, that's all I have to say.